Hello everyone, this is GTA Failure, and welcome to my true 100% plus series on GTA Vice City. Later in this video, I'll explain what this series is all about, but first we'll take a look at a blue screen which is a clear nod to the Commodore 64. This was a video game console which was huge back in the day and was competitive with the NES for a while. The Commodore 64 featured a blue loading screen just like this one, where to start your game, you'd have to type load, quotation mark, asterisk, quotation mark, comma 8, comma 1. Early games on this system were stored on cassette tapes. The Commodore 64 came out in 1982. Vice City is set in 1986. And during this Commodore 64 screen, you can hear a song by the Buggles called Video Killed the Radio Star. This song is famous for being the first ever song played on MTV in the US way back in 1981. I'll play a few seconds of it for you now. Possible headphone warning. When the Rockstar logo comes up, you'll hear an 8-bit version of the jingle from the beeper in GTA 3, which itself was copied from the original GTA 1 main theme. Possible headphone warning now. Now we'll check out the opening credits. There is going to be a montage of Vice City gameplay in the background with a series of black shapes overlaid in the foreground. I'm going to do my best to tell you what each of the black shapes represents, but there are a couple of them that I don't recognize. I absolutely love this opening cutscene right here with the sun and the palm trees. This is a gun pointing to the right, trigger on the bottom, and a few rounds on the lower left. This is a woman's face. Up next is a sports car. The next one is the Malibu Club in the background, but I have no clue what the black foreground image is. This one, I think, is a video camera pointing to the right. This is a woman getting out of the pool. Those are handrails on either side of her for a pool ladder. Palm fronds from a palm tree. This next one looks to me like a wildcat, maybe a jaguar or a puma, but I don't understand the connection between a wildcat and this game. That's a shark, and you can see sharks in the waters of Vice City. This is a martini glass with an olive on a toothpick. Up next is a jet. The next image is an athlete playing the sport of Hi-Li. That's J-A-I space A-L-A-I, which was really popular in Florida back in the 80s. Here are two sports cars, and the final image is a razor blade, clearly a reference to Tommy being clean-shaven and not at all a reference to snorting lines of cocaine. There were a couple of black shapes that I wasn't sure about. If you know what they are, let us know in the comments. So before we look at the Vice City opening cutscenes, I'm going to show you the tail end of a mission from GTA 3 called Mike Lip's Last Lunch. There's two reasons I'm showing this mission. First, the opening cutscene of Vice City, which we'll watch in just a minute, is set right here in Marco's Bistro in Liberty City. Second, the main antagonist of Vice City is Sonny Forelli. He's the head of the Forelli crime family. Sonny is the brother of Mike Lips Forelli, and that's the person we're seeing uh, walking down the stairs and about to be killed in GTA 3. Just thinking about the timeline here, Vice City is set in 1986, which is 15 years before the events of GTA 3 that we're watching right now. Okay, so momentarily, we will check out the start of Vice City, and I'm going to share some info about the opening cutscenes, but I'm going to talk right over them, and if you actually want to hear the audio from the cutscenes, feel free to go to the bottom of the video description to find a link to a video of all the cutscenes in the game. It's made by the YouTuber NRM Gaming HD. So here we are right back in Marco's Bistro, 1986. First note, the dead guy in the back right of this shot hanging from a meat hook between a couple of slabs of beef, standard GTA stuff. Now I'll read from the GTA wiki, which I've also linked below. The head of the Ferelli crime family, Sonny Ferelli, his right-hand man, and another unknown Ferelli member discuss Tommy Versetti's release from prison. Tommy is wrapping up a 15-year prison sentence after being arrested and jailed for killing 11 men during a botched hit. The mobsters decide to send Tommy to Vice City to start their drug operations there for a few months. Also from the wiki, in this game, the interior of Marco's Bistro is actually located in the Ocean View Hotel and is connected to Tommy's room. The song that can be heard playing in the background during this first cutscene is Broken Wings by Mr. Mister. The song is also featured on the in-game radio station Emotion 98.3. So while we wrap up this cutscene, I'll start reading from the wiki about the next cutscene. 
When Tommy, Harry, and Lee arrive at Escobar International Airport, an airplane can be seen landing on the curved runway in the background. Realistically, it is not possible to land like that, possibly hinting that a straight runway was present in the beta. Ken Rosenberg's Admiral is more detailed in the airport pickup scene than in usual gameplay with a slightly boxier build, detailed tan interior rather than the standard generic gray one, and a different rim design from GTA 3. After the opening cutscene, this Admiral becomes available to the player and it has a unique white color. The song that can be heard playing in the background during the airport cutscene is Mama Papa 2 by Mango Santa Maria. The song is also featured on the in-game radio station Radio Espantoso. The person flying the helicopter in this next cutscene is Lance Vance, a major character in Vice City. Lance's brother Victor Vance isn't visible in the helicopter, but he magically appears just outside the helicopter carrying two suitcases filled with drugs. We'll hear Lance talk about his brother's murder several times during Vice City, and he'll want revenge against Ricardo Diaz for his brother's death in this cutscene. So it's Ricardo Diaz that has set up the ambush, and, uh, and Victor Vance is going to be murdered by Ricardo Diaz's men. Victor Vance is the protagonist of Vice City Stories. He's murdered here in GTA Vice City in 1986, but you'll learn all about his backstory if you play Vice City Stories, which is set in 1984. Vic's lips do not move during the cutscene in the original versions of the game. This was later fixed in the Definitive Edition. He also looks quite different to his appearance in Vice City Stories, wearing an orange shirt, speaking with a Latin accent, as opposed to a North American accent in Vice City Stories, and here he has a full head of hair. In the game's files, a slightly altered dialogue exists for the final cutscene. It's revealed that Vic and Lance own a farm in Panama. Moreover, the game files contain a leftover motion capture scene for the unused dialogue between Tommy and Ken by Ken's office. YouTuber Mark Nico has posted a video of that alternate scene, and I've included a link to his video in the description below. At the end of this fourth cutscene, we will finally have control of our character, and I will say to all of my viewers, welcome to Vice City. From the wiki, when the player enters any vehicle after the cutscene, the radio will automatically tune into Flash FM and Billy Jean by Michael Jackson will play. I'll play a few seconds of that right now, possible headphone warning. In the mobile version and the 2013 re-release of the game and the definitive edition, the first song that plays is actually Self-Controlled by Laura Brandigan. We interrupt your programming with a message from the State Department. All bridges and some roads in the Vice City metropolitan area have been closed because of a severe weather warning. We just heard the announcement that a recent hurricane has resulted in the closure of a bunch of bridges. This is Rockstar's clever way of trying to force the player to do a bunch of story missions before the other islands are unlocked. We will do our best to get to the other islands well before they are officially open to us. Here I'll give a quick shout out to my buddy Evan for spending hours working on the thumbnails for this series and for GTA 3. I think they came out gorgeous. Thank you so much, Evan. The game clearly intends for you to go to the pink dot on the map, which is our first safe house, but I grabbed a police car just to show you that we're not actually on a mission right now, because if I was on a mission, I wouldn't be able to start Vigilante. So now we'll walk into our safe house and we will get the tutorial for saving our game. Pretty straightforward. You just have to walk into the pink cassette tape right there. And that's what I'll do. And I'm going to point out the name of the file that we're about to create when I save my game here. And it's going to be called In the Beginning, which is correct. In the Beginning is the name of the opening collection of cutscenes. So we have now wrapped up the collection of cutscenes called In the Beginning. So that's the name given to the save file. You'll see it right here. Again, we're not on a mission, so I could just go right back to my police car and start Vigilante if I wanted to, but I'm going to go into the uh, pink dot, and we'll notice that the name of this mission is an old friend. Keep that in mind, an old friend. In this cutscene, we share with Sonny that we were ambushed and we don't have the drugs or his cash. Sonny does not take this well. We promise to get him his money and the drugs and to find those responsible. Here are a couple of pieces of trivia from the wiki. A picture of real-life mafia boss Carlo Gambino can be seen on the wall behind Sonny. The song that plays during the cutscene is Life's What You Make It by the group Talk Talk. This song can be heard on Flash FM, and this cutscene is the only storyline mission in the entire game given by Sonny Ferrelli. So while we watch the rest of this cutscene, I'm going to tell you the plan for the gameplay for the rest of this video. There's a whole collection of mission-specific vehicles in the game that have special properties. Some of them are unique color, some of them are immune to damage from bullets. 
I'm going to start a brand new game a few times in this video because the Admiral from this opening cutscene is one of these unique vehicles and I want to show it to you. It is immune to damage from melee weapons and crashes and bullets and fire and explosions. So the community says this Admiral has a number of proofs. It's bulletproof, fireproof, etc. Sadly, all of these special properties are lost the moment the final cutscene ends, which I'll demonstrate for you by destroying that Admiral in a number of ways. As we wrap up this cutscene right here, uh, first I'm going to walk out of the building, although somehow I didn't get the footage for that. Sorry for the cut. And now I'm using a quick save program, which allows me to save my game anytime I'm not on a mission or in a vehicle. Uh, normally you should only be able to save your game at one of the safe houses. But check out the title of the save file. It's still called In the Beginning. This is a mistake on Rockstar's part. It should have been called An Old Friend. So now I've started a brand new game, and we're going to play around with the Admiral. Like I mentioned, the Admiral in the cutscene has a bunch of special properties, but the Admiral loses those properties as soon as this particular cutscene ends, which I'm going to let it end naturally right here. And so I will show you that this Admiral it takes damage in any number of ways, like just about every other normal vehicle in the game. So first, uh, you can see the windshield is cracked, and then we'll mess up the hood. And so this Admiral is not immune to damage from collisions. Now I'm going to use a cheat code. Don't worry, I'm not going to use uh, cheat codes very much in this series, but I just used the cheat code Thugs tools to give myself a bunch of weapons. And you can see that this Admiral is not immune to damage from melee weapons, right? It got damaged from the bat. This is in double speed, but clearly the Admiral is on fire. It's about to blow up. Officer, I'm doing important work here. This is science. So that Admiral not immune to damage from fire. And now I've started a brand new game, and again, use that Thugs Tools cheat code, and we will see that this Admiral is not immune to bullets. It uh, blew up after a few blasts from the shotgun. And here's yet another brand new game with a different cheat code. This one is Professional Tools. Gives me a different weapon set, and we're going to blast this Admiral in the face with a rocket. It turns out it doesn't like that so much. Clearly this Admiral is not immune to explosions. So here I am starting a brand new game for the last time in this video, I promise. It turns out it is possible to get the Admiral to retain its special properties that it has right now during this cutscene. And the way we're going to do that is to blow up the Admiral before the cutscene ends. The only way I can do that is to use a cheat code. We're going to type in Big Bang, which blows up all the vehicles in memory, including this Admiral. Surprisingly, it doesn't hurt Tommy at all. I don't know why. And now we're going to use another cheat code called Panzer, P-A-N-Z-E-R, which is a tank from World War II, a German tank. So uh, we started Vigilante. We're going to get out of the tank. We have 60 seconds to get back into the tank. I'm going to type Big Bang, which blows up the Admiral. Again, blows up the tank and blows up the criminal who was minding their own business somewhere else on the map. And that allows us to pass level one of Vigilante. Then we use Panzer to get a second tank. We type Big Bang again to blow up that tank and the Admiral and the criminal somewhere on the map and pass level two. And we're going to rinse and repeat until we get at least $6,000. So we just do Big Bang, Panzer, get in, and repeat. So the key is to get $6,000, which will allow us to buy Link's View Apartment, which is uh, north of here on this island. And what's special about Link's View Apartment, at least for our purposes, is that it has a garage. And many of you will know that when you put a damaged vehicle into a garage in a GTA game, the damage is repaired, right? The, the car is repaired. But you might not know that uh, the car is repaired even if it's blown up. It doesn't have to be just damaged a little bit. A garage has magical healing properties. And so this is going to be our key. We are somehow going to get this blown up Admiral into a garage of a safe house that we haven't bought yet, but we're closing in on the magical $6,000. So that's the idea. So now I've just got one more level of Vigilante to pass, and then we will have our requisite $6,000 and a little bit more. And then I will spawn one final tank in, and I will end Vigilante, and then I will begin a very long push to try to get this Admiral all the way up north to the Lynx View apartment. Note that the game is desperate to purge blown up vehicles from its memory, so I'm going to do my best during this push fest to keep the Admiral in my line of sight at all times. Anytime I'm not looking at the Admiral, there's a chance the game will despawn it. Note that I keep the Admiral on screen even when I'm going backwards a little bit, like if I have to correct right here, like I went backwards for a second or two, but I'm not going to go backwards for very long because if I do, the camera will spin around so that I can see behind me, but as soon as it spins around to behind me, I won't have the Admiral on the screen anymore, and there is a very good chance the Admiral will disappear, and then I'll be sad. I learned this technique for getting the Admiral from the YouTuber Champion. I've included their video in the description below. 
I've also included a link to a GTA forum post detailing all of the unique vehicles in the game. The forum poster is named Leonard. So now I finally have some time to explain what this series is. Welcome to my true 100% plus series on GTA Vice City. Generally speaking, I have three goals for this series. Number one, do everything in the game. More details on this soon. Number two, for each mission, share some interesting facts from the wiki. Number three, demonstrate all fail states for each mission and complete many missions in unexpected or entertaining ways. I'm hopeful to do all of the above without dying and without getting busted. I plan to reload my previous clean save state anytime I die or get busted. I was considering also trying to have no mission fails during this playthrough, but I'm planning on getting all of the unique vehicles that I can, and doing this requires failing some missions. I'm playing this game on PC through Steam. I'm playing on a mostly vanilla version of the game, except for the mods called Silent Patch and Widescreen Fix and the Quick Save program that I mentioned before. In the description below, I've included a link to a website that explains what Silent Patch does and how to install it. Mostly, I'll refrain from using glitches and cheats, but I'll occasionally relax this restriction if that allows me to do something that I think is worth demonstrating. For example, I have used all kinds of cheats in this particular video just to try to get this Admiral into a living, breathing state where I can show you that it has all of those proofs. And don't worry, I'm not going to use this save state here. Um, I'm going to actually delete the save state that I create once I successfully get this Admiral uh, into my garage and show you all of its proofs. So, like I mentioned, one of the three goals is to do everything in the game. So that will include getting 100% completion, obviously, according to the in-game percentage tracker. But I have lots of other ideas for tasks that aren't required, but that I'm going to do anyway, just to really experience everything in this game. For example, the game keeps track of the player's criminal rating, and maybe I'll try to reach the highest rating possible, which is called Godfather. Uh, in order to get 100%, you need to pass something called Paramedic once. Um, and uh, typically, you would just do that one time and then not anymore in that save file. But I think I'm just going to try to do Paramedic from each of the hospitals, just so that I can really say that I completed everything. I experienced everything in this game. Um, I'm also going to show off all the Easter eggs I can find. I'll point out connections between the characters and events of Vice City and the rest of the GTA universe. If you have any ideas for things I should do in this series, put them in the comments. Maybe we can make a fun task list together. I'm open to all reasonable suggestions. I might even be open to some unreasonable ones. I'm also planning on doing as many of the in-game 100% completion tasks as I can before I complete any more story missions. Surprisingly, I've already completed one story mission here. Uh, the uh, opening cutscenes to the game, together with that other cutscene where we let Sunny know that the drugs and the money are gone, those two things together combine for a mission. And so I actually do have credit for something called an objective point in this game. Uh, and uh, if I showed you my statistic right now for in-game percentage, it would still say zero, but that's just because it's round you know, like I think I have like 0.65% or whatever for completing those cutscenes because they constitute a full-fledged mission, but uh, the 0.65 gets rounded down to the nearest integer below. Uh, so I'm still at 0%, uh, but I'm not planning on doing any other story missions in the game until I do everything that I can to get my percentage as high as possible uh, before I have to start doing story missions in the game. So between now and the uh, next story mission video in this series, you'll see me do all of the R3 missions, all the unique jumps, all the rampages, the packages, the RC missions, the off-road missions, stadium events, and robberies. How did I come up with the idea for this series? I totally stole it. There's a GTA speedrunner named Joshimas who did a series just like this one, but for San Andreas. His series is linked below. I emailed Josh a while ago asking if I could borrow very liberally from his San Andreas ideas for a GTA 3 series in the same vein as his San Andreas series, and he said, sure. So credit where credit is due, many of the things that I'll do in this series are taken straight from Josh's SA series. If you like this series on Vice City, feel free to check out my true 100% plus series for GTA 3. That playlist is linked below. So we're just about ready. We've got everything lined up just so. We're going to give a massive push. I was hoping to get this Admiral all the way in the garage, but my tank ended up going on top of the Admiral, which wasn't great. And then it backed up my tank, and then the garage door closed, and the Admiral disappeared, and I was so worried that I lost it. But I got it. You had faith in me. You never had any doubts. Awesome, awesome. An hour and a half of fails to get this beautiful Admiral into my garage. Shake the camera because we're real happy. Love it, love it, love it. I also shake the camera sometimes when I'm really frustrated at GTA. You'll have to judge from the context. So we're going to save the game here. And 
Yeah, I know, I'm a big fat dirty sink and cheater, that's what the warning said. And now, before we show off all the proofs of that particular admiral, I'm going to show you a bunch of my fails. This is my first fails compilation in this video series. It will certainly not be the last one, but you come here to a YouTuber whose name is GTA Failure, and this is what you get. So here, the car despawned during that little cutscene. Here we got busted. In this next one, the Admiral was off the screen for just a moment, and it disappeared. Here, same deal. I need to be like up on the windshield, that's the problem. And I only discovered it after losing a bunch of Admirals by being kind of on the hood of my car. Okay, this one, I spawned the tank on top of me. Word to the wise, that is generally not a good idea. So we suffocated. In this one, busted. And this one, uh, I think we're just going to let it go off screen momentarily and gone, just like that. The painful thing about this is that like each of these attempts was like a good seven minutes of pushing. All right, so here I had everything and I was like, oh, let me just push this by hand. And then I walk into the save marker and I said, all right, I don't need to save. But then it just disappeared. Brutal, brutal. This one, uh, I just needed to get it lined up. It, I, I shouldn't have pushed it into like the corner of the garage. That's no good. Uh, this one, same deal. I should have gotten out. I don't know why I didn't get out. But the garage door is going to come down. And now I'm a sad panda. Okay, so here we are back in the save file where the thing worked. So that was the end of the fails compilation. And now I'm going to show you all of the beautiful special properties that this Admiral has. So first, we are going to drive at full speed, which is not that fast. It's an Admiral. But full speed into this building in front of us and no damage. No damage at all. Not a cracked windshield. Nothing going on with the hood. I'll scrape against the right-hand side, the passenger side. And I'll show you the passenger side. And again, it has no damage. Now I'm going to use another cheat code here, the Thug's Tools, to get me a bunch of weapons. And so first, remember that we bashed this door off with a bat when we had the Admiral from after the cutscene, which was not damage-proof from melee weapons, but this one is. And that other Admiral, we got it to blow up from uh, catching on fire a few times, but if you look carefully, you will see that there's a fire under the Admiral, but the Admiral itself is not actually on fire. It should have blown up by now. I think I threw like four or five Molotovs. And now we'll blast it with a shotgun. I wasn't sure if I was close enough, so here we go. Plenty close, and should be like five shotgun blasts, and this thing should blow up, but nothing. It does not care. It's bulletproof. It's fireproof. It is collision-proof. It is melee-proof. And now we use a different uh, cheat code professional tools to get myself a rocket launcher. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. And get some and the Admiral does not care. So now I'm gonna use the uh, the wanted cheat because I'm getting harassed by the fuzz here. Just doing testing. And then just to show it wasn't a fluke, another rocket to the face. I'm busted, but I'm just gonna reload my save state. But anyway, uh, that Admiral is pretty darn special. And now after an hour and a half of fails, we are going to delete that save file. And now I'll load our previous save state from before we used all of those cheats to get that Admiral. This is where we're going to pick up in our next video. If you have any feedback for me on the series or ideas for tasks I should consider, drop them in the comments. You can also feel free to share your memories of this game. And if you have anything to say about Vice City, put it in the comments. We would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you real soon.